Any sequel tries to replicate the success of what went before, and the second Isle of Wight Comic Con certainly did that, with all new attractions, and not one, but two Time Lords. It's really great. Um, I didn't know there was that many people on the island. I think a lot of people have travelled over from the mainland to see you guys. All right, no, I'm, isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's flattering, it's great. And, and it's a lovely day too. It's a lovely place to have it as well. Fantastic to kind of see all these people that you've, you've known for so long. You no, know, it's boring, I hate it. <laughs> I'm always meeting these people, I want to meet new people. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, you know, Paul and I, we were friends before he became Doctor Who, before he stole the TARDIS off of me. It's a Liverpudlian. <laughs> Never lend your TARDIS to a Liverpudlian. Taking what you did as the Doctor and transforming it again into The Hobbit as well. I mean, how did that come about? Well, because I toured um, the world with Ian McKellen, you know, big tall fella. plays Gandalf, I believe. He was playing King Lear at the time, and I was playing the fool to his Lear, and it's like a double act. And we went to New Zealand, and Peter Jackson saw us together, and thought, wow, they work together as a very good pair. That's how I got the part, really. Doctor Who has gained popularity worldwide, but it was only with the anniversary that the Doctor, played by Paul McGann, was truly accepted as part of the timeline. <laughs> the canon is a big thing, and the canon is a, it's a fan thing. It is, it, it's, a, it's a relief. Because there was a few years where I wasn't sure they were going to... What the fans call the wilderness years. Because actually you, you finally got given your uh, transformation sequence in you as well. When they did the the, yeah, which is more than some. But I, yeah, they made me wait. But yeah, it's, it's a relief. <laughs> I think maybe Doctor Who's much more... is more popular worldwide. I've just been on... Uh, um, um, I went on the Trans-Siberian Express. Well, actually, I left it... Pancras by train Hello, and trained it all the way to Hanoi through uh, Eastern Europe, China, etc. And everywhere I went, there were Doctor Who fans. Even in Hanoi, there's a cafe there with a TARDIS on top of it. Amazing, really. And I saw a Dalek in Siberia. I mean, that's where all the Daleks should be. Send them to Siberia. Some gulag. It's one of the, it's a universal story, really. It's a story we love. I mean, there are, they say there are only five stories in the universe, under the sun, as it were. And one of them is someone coming from outside the planet, down onto Earth, taking on the human form and trying to help us and fight against evil. Religions, not one, many religions over the millennia have been formed because of that one story. And I think that's its magic. It's that. We love that story. So do either of the former Doctors have any advice for the latest actor to take on the character? Not at all. Not at all, just do her thing. I think we're in perfectly safe hands, don't you? I saw the first ep. I'm yet to see the second one. I'll have to see that on catch-up, but I saw the first one. I thought, thought she was great. Fantastic, actually. And if they asked you, would you be involved in the new series in any way? It'd be silly not to, wouldn't it, really? If they invited you in. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, we, and, and all of us that did it, you know, I had to spend that first episode, you know, doing exactly what she had to do. It was like, oh, I don't know who I am, I can't remember it. But she managed to sort of just keep it nice and light, get through that bit really quickly, straight into the action, you know. And, uh, and it worked a treat, I thought. Yes, learn the lines and try to bump into the monsters. On occasion, the monsters have been a, a little bit... Uh, flimsy, shall we say, and a bit kind of interesting. We've got the classic ones like that everybody remembers, like the Daleks and the, the Cybermen, and then you've got some that are a little bit more obscure, that look like somebody's just put a plant pot on somebody's head. Well, no, I think what happened was that they used to nick bits from Blue Peter. You know, what was left over from Blue Peter, they turned into a monster. And so, as the TARDIS doors close on this year's event, who knows what we can expect next time. Richard Stringer, That's TV.